Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to capture audio and more importantly, how to monitor audio. Those are two very uh, I wouldn't say difficult subjects, but they're often misunderstood and they're not that clear in OBS. And I'm trying to make it as easy for you as possible because it is important to know how you can monitor what you're currently sending out. At the same time, it's important to know how to capture what's currently coming in, be that from an application, from your desktop or from a game. Let's have a look at it. I've set up two scenes here. I've got my desktop scene and I've got my game scene. Subnautica is still running, but we can't currently hear anything. Let's carry on with this. So this is a game capture that I've set up here. The same would hold true for a desktop capture, but I'm going to use a game capture just to illustrate what's going on here. So we can set up the incoming audio in two different ways. One is that we add an audio source to this mix here, or we can go and add a source to the audio mixer that'll be there no matter what scene we switch to. So the difference is that if I add a source to this window and I go to a different scene, then that source either needs to be added there as well or it won't be part of my scene. On the other hand, if I add something to the audio mixer, that means that that audio will be there at all times rather than dependent on what scene we're switching to. This is probably more of an implication if you're thinking about your microphone and no matter which scene you switch to, you would like for people to hear what you're saying, then that is a source that you should perhaps add to the audio mixer. But a source that you're cutting to every once in a while, like a moving video or like a web browser window or whatever, that might be better suited to the sources window here. Let's check out both options. The first one is the source and we can, if we, in case of a game that we want to capture, we can add one and that is not an input capture but an output capture. We have two of those here. Input would be something like a microphone, anything that's coming into you, whereas all your output capture is what you're currently listening to. If you were playing a video game, then you would be listening to that video game's output. So let me add that one first of all comes up with a little window here. I'll just go click OK. And that gives us only really one option up here. That's the device. And that's the audio output device we would like to add to OBS. Default is whatever is currently set on the Windows audio settings. You can use that and it will probably give you some audio but it might not be the best way to handle audio because the default in Windows can change and it means that you have to have a look at a place other than OBS to see what's going on. Whereas when you know you're listening to the current game with your USB audio device or whatever other thing, your headphones or whatever is currently available on your computer, you might as well set that as the output device and then you know exactly that that device is what OBS is listening to. If I click OK, then I can see that another audio thing has been added to my audio mixer and that happens to be the Subnautica music. And I can adjust the levels here, I can make that quieter, blend that in with my own voice, which notice I'm currently also not seeing in the audio mixer, so we'll have to address that. I can also mute that here. And there's more properties that we're going to have a look at in a moment. Now watch what happens if I go and switch this to my desktop. Other than me seeing infinity, I can see that that audio that I've, I was capturing in the other scene has disappeared from the audio mixer. That's important to understand. So now it's back because I'm switching to the scene into which I've added the audio output capture source to it. Let me show you another way of achieving the same thing, but make it independent of which scene I'm switching to. Say we were to stick with the audio output capture. I'm gonna go get rid of this here just quickly and I'll leave the sources alone. And instead I'm gonna head over to the settings here. That'll open this crazy scary window. Let's go to the audio section and have a look at this. We see two important boxes here. One is the devices and one is the advanced box, which is for audio monitoring. We'll deal with that in a moment. For now, let's have a look at devices and notice that all of them are disabled by default. Those are sources that will be in your audio mixer at all times. So in my case, perhaps I'm going to repurpose the desktop audio here and set that to my USB audio device. And that is exactly the same source that I had as an audio source in my sources window on the scene. But if I set it up here, then it will be available no matter which scene I switch to. 
Notice that these names here, they don't necessarily mean what you're putting in there. They're just kind of dummy names. Desktop audio pretty much describes what I want to do with it. But if you had another audio source, for example, that is not a microphone, you could just put that in here. This is not just for microphones. It's just a dummy label. Just remember where you've put what. That's that. Let me click apply and OK. And now I can see that my desktop audio is in the audio mixer, which is also showing the Subnautica music right now. Notice when I switch to another scene, my desktop audio is still part of my mix. So no matter where I switch to, even when I switch to me, I can still hear the Subnautica music. That's how that works. Now, monitoring is another thing that we need to talk about right now. There's two things that we need to set up. One is our actual audio monitoring device. And the other one is which sources of our mix we actually like to listen to in the monitor. So let's have a look at that step by step. First of all, let's head back to the settings menu and set up our audio monitoring device. That's under here, under audio again, and in the advanced box. Now, again, like before, the default monitoring device is currently set to the Windows default. And just as I've explained this before, this is not the best option to have that set because especially Bluetooth devices kind of come and go. So Windows might switch one source onto the other. So you might all of a sudden lose something that was working a minute ago just because, I don't know, battery ran out, you replugged the cable into something else. It's not the best way of using it. So pick the audio monitoring device that you'd like to use. So for example, your headphones. I'm going to pick these. Those are my speakers here. I'm going to go and pick those. And this other box here, disable Windows audio ducking. I would recommend you leave that on. It is on by default, so it is disabled when it is ticked. And Windows audio ducking is something in which Windows is trying to level out audio if you have two or more sources that are both playing at a very high level. It is trying to duck one down and let's not have Windows do that because it might interfere with the levels that we're monitoring. So let's just, you know, get Windows out of the equation and hit OK. This will set up the actual audio monitoring device, but notice that we still don't hear anything. And that is because currently the desktop audio that is going on here is not being fed back into my audio monitoring device. For that, we have to go onto this little cog icon here. And I know it sounds complicated, but it is getting you there. Go and click on that and hit advanced audio options. As soon as you do that, you can see a big window popping up with all your audio sources in here, one of which is your desktop audio. I've also got webcam audio, but that's currently not active. So let's have a look at the desktop audio. That is set to monitor off. That is exactly why we don't hear it. If we were to monitor this and output at the same time, then we will hear it, which is exciting. The other option, just in case you're wondering, monitor only mute the output is also exactly doing what you think it will be doing. It will let you monitor an audio source without it appearing in the mix. So monitor and output means you're recording and or streaming what you're listening to. Monitor off means you don't hear it, but it will be included in the mix. And monitor only means you can hear it, but it will not be included in the mix. Most likely monitor and output is what you want. Hit close and that will now make you hear the audio as well as include it in the audio mix. We can deal with a microphone in just the same way. And let me just show you how to set that up just for completion, because you might want to include a microphone in your mix. Head over to settings again, head over to audio, pick another audio source, perhaps mic auxiliary audio, and then pick the microphone that you'd like to use. So perhaps I'm going to use this one here. That is my desktop microphone here, the one that's you know, that you occasionally see. Hit OK. And now we have my microphone here. Maybe I'm a little bit hot. Maybe the music is a little bit loud. Let's tone that down. And this is now what I'm saying. If that is too loud, I can always duck that down a little bit or I can make that louder. I can apply filters and all the rest of it. Now notice that for my microphone, it does actually make sense for me to not listen to that. See, the microphone is currently to set to monitor off. If I were to monitor that as well, I would likely go insane, which is why it's a good idea to leave the microphone on not monitor. That about wraps it up for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Join me in the next one when we're going to have a look at audio filters, a very exciting topic that lets you add compression and noise reduction and sidechain ducking to your audio mix. Mm -hmm.